Thanks for joining us. I'm JJ, and this is Shane. Hello. And we have just broken out Fantasy Flight's Netrunner Terminal Directive set, which is uh, Netrunner's first attempt at narrative campaign play. Um, and so we're going to do a let's play of this for you, because maybe you don't have a partner you want to devote multiple weeks to playing this with. And so we'll walk you through it. I'm going to play the Corp. I'll be Haas Bioroid. And Shane is playing the runner, who is a shaper. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to butcher her name. Uh, Let's go with Ayla. But, I mean, Ayla, or apparently she goes by Bios, which who doesn't really? is, is, is a really fun nickname, I guess. <laughs> All right. Bios Rahim. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, so, uh, this game starts with a murder as all great plots do. <laughs> so I'm going to read the narrative text to you. You're in luck today. The murder. She was glad the bodies were gone, even if the smell still lingered. Investigator Whitney Frank had seen her share of violent crime scenes, but these ragdoll corpses with crushed skulls had left her shaken. Two techs bagged the heavy sledgehammer while a low-hovering cam drone gathered some last-minute images. The other officers milled among themselves, sipping yucca bean or swiping away vert after vert of logs. Soon this would be just another case number in the immense NAPD backlog. Pretty quick mop job, quipped a familiar voice. Bet that really burns you, wit. Investigator Inez Delgado stepped out of the shadows, her fingers dancing around her illuminated pad as always. Yeah, too quick, Frank shook her head. Somebody wants us to go away quietly. What are you doing down here? As part of Cyber Bureau, Delgado rarely left her desk. The city surveillance network served her. I had a hunch, replied Delgado. Local SICAM is busted, but I intercepted some vid from another source, the sort that's a journo's glee and some corpse nightmare. Of course she had. Delgado had probably hacked the source herself. The victims were all human first, Frank explained. The evidence points to them being jumped by some big, heavily augmented, really strong. Someone big, heavily augmented, really strong. He killed them all with a sledgehammer, exactly the same way human first goes about destroying golems. Delgado crossed her arms and looked at the ground. It was a bioroid that did this. Frank stared. No way. Bioroids can't kill. They've got those directives. The vid all but proves it, Delgado said. Maybe someone wrote a new directive. Dum dum dum. <laughs> If we can, we could just add it in the uh, um, law and order, like, oh, chung, chung. Chung, chung. <laughs> I mean, who needs to edit it when we can say it? That's true. <laughs> uh, so, so who goes first with figuring out what their narrative is here? Um, I guess I can, since sure. I just got to read all of that. <laughs> got to. <laughs> I definitely didn't talk you into that. Um, <laughs> all right, so I've got uh, the beginning of my story with an old friend... Uh, the message had been signed by Hertz, which is a handle you had almost forgotten. The last time you'd heard it was in the context of whatever happened to Hertz. Anyone remember them? So probably a hoax, but what the hell? You opened it. It was definitely them. From calling you a loser, L-U-S-E-R, to a dozen other in-jokes, there's no way the message was faked, and no one else would have the balls to slap a handful of NAPD watermarked 3Ds of a murder scene into the data stream like that. So here you are, outside a yucca bean kiosk in Els es Esmeraldas, about to meet Hertz face to face. The problem is that suddenly a cop walks up, kicks your foot, and says, hey, loser. Lesser? I don't know if they're going for something different there. I don't know. I'd go with loser. All right. <laughs> and sits down next to you. Okay, so short version. There's a reason no one's heard uh, from me in years. Uh, the reason no one's heard from me in years is I'm a cop now. She shows you her badge, which flashes its ID t at your pad. Investigator Inez Delgado. But I need outside help on this one. I got what looks like a, a spree killer that no one is investigating. She kicks your foot again and to stall your protest. Here's the kicker. Killer's a bioroid. You in? All right. So, so you, guess, should, you should yep. turn your card and, oh, yeah. and choose a path. So, before your first game, um, add all copies of that investigator into my deck. Then I get to pick one. Okay, so Shane's at the crux of his first narrative choice. <laughs> um, Alright, so I think I'm going to go with the, uh, I think it's called the Protector Ethos. Um, so the dialogue is, 
One, a cop? That does not compute. Two, how can I help get this thing off the streets and hopefully give some corporate or another a black eye? And so then it tells me to read Ounce of Protection. The playbook says, the best time to win a battle is before it begins. Preparation is everything. You decide to take your time and start slow. There's no sense in tipping your hand and letting the authorities know that you're chasing a murderer. Your secretary, Proxy, with the, the zero is an O, uh, the O is a zero, <laughs> agrees. Speaking as the most important resident of your rig, the last thing I want is for you to hit some gray or black ice and get my home scragged and melted. Let's, use, let's get some, us some tools to work with. And so that gives me slot G, which says when you have three or more programs installed, you gain six credits and close this file. That seems pretty easy to do. <laughs> what does closing the file mean? Uh, it uh, puts one of these stickers over it so that it no longer happens. Oh, once you use it, you don't get it anymore? Yes. Wow, okay. Yep. So that's, that's a one time. Oh, I get it. Six credits when I have three or more programs. Got it. Um, now I place, place the protector ethos in slot A, uh, which says, whenever the scorp, corp scores an agenda, I gain two credits. So, there's some extra money if I start losing. Uh, next up, read, follow the trail. Um, Delgado gives you meat box details to coordinate the investigation. Can't have you coming down to the station, she explains. Doubt you'd want to anyway. She introduces you, virtually, to Officer Frank, a voluptuous redhead woman who seems equal parts nervous and exasperated with Delgado's attempts to saddle her with a nickname. Your role is simple, Delgado explains. We, thi we think one of the corpses is trying to cover this up. I could crack everything open myself, except, surprise, I have no warrant. So that part is up to you. Find out what the corp knows that we don't. Bran and I, she said. Bran and I, she says. That's not my name, Frank explains. Uh, Br Bran and I will keep working the forensic and eyewitness angle. Uh, all right, so now I have an objective. Um, I progress this objective by winning a game, and once I've progressed it twice, I reveal slot two. Uh, it's also worth noting that the card I shuffled into my deck can get me to slot two faster, so... It's set two, right? Uh, set yes, two? set two. Yep. Uh, I think I've got one more thing. Rise up. <laughs> um, you meet Delgado again in the private chat space Members Only, which helps reassure you as to her true identity. You run into a few old friends there, actually. I can't mi mix these words like this, Delgado explains. I can't be a cop and have to maybe bust you guys someday and also be chummy. But this is too important not to use the assets I have. So if it comes to it, her avatar shrugs. It might ha have to be an all hands on deck. Guru's army, shouts uh, San San Serif. <laughs> <laughs> no, says someone else. The gang of N. Nothing else productive happens at that meeting. All right. Uh, Dude, and, names are important. And now I get uh, this in slot D, which if I lose the game, I progress this one. If I progress it four times, I reveal set nine. So who knows what awaits me there. One can only assume that set nine opens by saying, you have really screwed up. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Finally, destroy any remaining stickers and cards in this set and discard this card. All right. Cool. Your turn. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, I've already forgot which... Oh, right. Okay, here we go. Uh, uh, other side. Yes. All right. Three dead in lieu. The images spilling across the air before you are gruesome. Mangled bodies, blood sprayed across a back alley somewhere in Laguna Valesco. That, I guess it's LV, not Lou. My bad. <laughs> Three dead, more images follow. The last one is familiar to you. You saw it on the news feed a few nights ago. This is Victor Gray, explains Sloan, your new chief of security. Also, nobody named Sloan has ever been a good guy. <laughs> UN bigwig on the Interplanetary Affairs Committee. Found dead in his hotel. Drowning, ruled an accident. Sloan pauses, reviewing his notes through his brain machine interface. We know it was a homicide. Covered up for two reasons. One, things with Mars are tense enough as it is. Two, the killer is a bioroid. 
which is supposed to be impossible because the first directive forbids them from killing or even allowing a human to come to harm. Sloan gestures, and the vert display swims back to the bloody alleyway murder. It looks like either that same bioroid is still out there killing, or there's more than one murder bot on the loose. Sloan folds his arms behind his back and waits, his briefing done. My staff is ready to pursue this at your order. A renegade bioroid is a disaster for some and an opportunity for others. One thing is clear, you must find it first. So I've chosen also the protector path. I want it found and neutralized with plausible deniability of any involvement. So then I get the task of not today. Your first priority is to get the killer off the streets. You can study the anomaly at leisure afterwards. You reprioritize several internal assets, delaying non-critical projects and reassigning personnel from overstaffed departments. R&D aren't happy about it, but then when are they ever? So the first time the runner jacks out of a run, I may choose any number of cards in HQ and add them to the bottom of R&D, then draw that many cards and close the file. And then I get, um, I also get the protector ethos in slot A, which says whenever the runner makes an unsuccessful run, gain two credits, which I assume I will desperately need all the time. Uh, and then we have another object, we have an objective called by the book. The good news is that the subject is an android, says your principal legal advisor, Zhang. We don't need to file any extraordinary rendition paperwork or even admit we have it unless we get subpoenaed, but I still advise caution. You decide to follow two parallel strategies. The first is to attempt to solve the murder in the traditional way, gathering evidence and liaising with the NAPD where appropriate. The second is to attempt to predict the bioroid's next move and intercept it. Chief Sloan is confident that one of the two approaches will be successful given time, but do you have enough time? I guess it depends on how many straight games I lose. <laughs> um, let's see, and then... So that is your I have, win, win two games to get to... That is my win two games, and here yep. I'm going to lose. Uh, against all odds, you really should bring this to the board. You don't pay your secretary to be so fussy. In fact, you don't pay your secretary at all. It's an AI, a computer program that does a reasonable facsimile of a mother hen in the guise of a holographic person. Still, it's got a point. You are devoting a significant portion of the company's resources to what might amount to nothing. But if the board were notified, the directors might get involved. If they decide to get involved, they might remove you from the project. They might even remove you from your position. Your secretary accepts your decision with the exact same grace and respect you might expect from your grandmother. Well, let's call it a last resort then. <laughs> um, and then, all right, we are good to go. And we're gonna get our board set up. Okay, so we're all ready to go. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and jump in here with a disclaimer now that you've made it this far into this video. Uh, neither Shane nor I, as far as I know, has played Netrunner in at least a year. Yeah, thereabouts. So we're likely to F this up fairly substantially, and you can tell us all about it in the comments. Um, in the meantime, we yep. have some new um, identities that were given to us, I think, in Terminal Directive, am I right? Yep, yep, these are Terminal and Directive And so I have a, an HB identity called Sater Laboratories, Destiny Defined. And their ability is that the first time each turn the runner loses or spends a click during a run, you may add one card from archives to the top of R&D. Uh, and mine, um, Bios, I'm still going with, who is a simulant specialist. Um, before drawing my starting hand, I get to look at the top six cards of my stack, which I did, set four of them face down as NVRAM, and shuffle the rest into your stack which I did. Uh, then I can click to add one card from NVRAM to my grip. Um, and when I first read this card, I didn't know quite how it worked, but since then, people have done FAQs and stuff, and I do get to look through the cards. It's not like one random card from NVRAM. Oh, yeah. yeah. Got it. Yeah, that yeah. would be would substantially be worse. Much worse. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, it doesn't actually say. We'll be using Swank Rune Wars tokens for this, because yeah. we forgot our Netrunner stuff. We did. Uh, but, but they're pretty much interchangeable, which is great. <laughs> it does work out. It turns out FFG likes giving out little pieces of cardboard. Yes. Um, so yeah, we've got inspiration tokens. The cardboard ones are uh, one credit, and the plastic, acrylic, whatever ones are five. Uh, we've got some click trackers that are these little numbers, um, which I think are better than the click trackers that come with Netrunner, um, and various other tokens for various other. We'll describe them as we use them nonsense. if they come into play. Yep. 
All right. Uh, I think that's the court may go first. Yes. That seems that's to suit my works. memory. Great. All right. I'm going to drop. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to gonna have a really good first turn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get to look at a lot of stuff in R&D. Or maybe just one thing over and over. It's hard to say. <laughs> so, all right. Mandatory first draw. I get three of these click things. Oh, it's also worth noting uh, we built these decks out of one copy of Core 2.0, which actually is new, unlike Terminal Directive, which was new when we decided to do this. Um, and then, of course, uh, the cards from Terminal Directive. So these cards aren't, these decks aren't very good. Yeah, they're quite gimpy, actually. Um, uh, Core 2.0 is notably less powerful than Core 1.0. Um, and so we're, we're not, we're not playing top level Netrunner decks here. No, um, yeah, I, I can only hope that Shane's deck is as poor as mine is. It's pretty bad. I, I like to consider this classic Netrunner. <laughs> the way I remember the game. All right. Um, Except for that all the broken shit. Right. So... I'm going to click one hedge fund because I remember that being good from back in the day. Oh, that's definitely still good. Yeah. Um, and, uh, let's see, I get, yeah, there we go. That's yep. how we used to do that. All right. Um, so, let's see. Let's see, this is where, I'm used to playing the classic cost buyer board, so I'm like, well, I install a card and get a credit. But I don't get a credit <laughs> anymore. No. Uh-uh. And, in fact, they did away with that identity in Core 2.0. I can it, understand why, because yeah. it was really nice. It was very good. It was quite good. <laughs> we can't have good things anymore. I'm gonna... Alright, I'm gonna use click two to draw. And click three to install a piece of ice. And I'll pass turn. All right. Unprotected HQ. <laughs> Have at it. So please spend all your clicks this turn running. <laughs> we'll see Definitely don't install anything. Um, well, I think first click, I'm going to use this process automation, which gains me two credits and a card. Nice. For free. Um... Second click, I'm going to use my ability to grab one of these NVRAM cards. Third click, I'm going to install an HQ interface. Nice. And fourth click, let's run that HQ. Run fourth click. So do you see one extra? Yes. So you can see two. Yep. Okay, first one, Archer, good to know. Second one, uh, whenever you encounter a, whenever an encounter with a piece of ice protecting the server ends, in which the runner broke at least one subroutine, he or she loses one click if able. Hmm. I've got the credits to trash it. Uh, I gotta regret that. Yeah, let's trash him. Mason, you were a valiant <laughs> servant of <laughs> And that's the back court. in your hand, sadly. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right. Once I get an agenda, you're just never gonna know. <laughs> uh, all right. <clears throat> let's see. All right, uh, click one, I'm gonna draw. Click two. I will install a card. And click three, I'll hedge fund again because you can't go wrong with that. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> Pass turn. Okay, um, click one, I'm gonna diesel. Which draws three cards. Well, that didn't really help. <laughs> um, hmm.
guess. Clicks two and three, I'll click for credits. And then click four, I'll play this Damon guy. Degtier? Sure. <laughs> the Hedgier? Let's, uh, let's go with that. All right. Um, Degdeer can host a single program. When you install a program on Degdeer, lower its install cost by one. The memory cost of the hosted program does not count against your memory limit. That's pretty slick. Yeah, I like it. All right, so is that four? Uh, yeah, which means I have to discard a card, and it's going to be test run. Cool. All right, mandatory draw. Um, all right. Let's see if I remember how this works. <clears throat> I'm going to biotic labor on click one. Oh no. Spending four. Uh, that'll give me two clicks. Yep. So I now have four. Yep. Um, install a card and advance it three times and score it. Yep. Right? That's that still legal, yeah? Okay. <laughs> Um, yep. Go away. And then, let's see, can you see my scoring area if I put it over here? Sure. Uh, so I've got evidence collection in my scoring area. When you win the game with evidence collection in your score area, reveal set two. So it's sort of a shortcut to uh, set two cards, and I will pass turn. Okay. Congratulations on collecting that evidence. Uh, using yeah. Using your bio May or may not uh, sh just blow that up for Archer later. <laughs> This evidence, whatever, I could shoot this lady in the I'm not face. Sh I'm not sure I want uh, set two as bad as I want Archer. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um... Well, this feels bad, we're gonna do it anyway. Four clicks, four credits. Oh man, I that is, that is the loneliest turn, yep. isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I feel that. Yep, here we are. Fast turn. Alright, mandatory draw. <clears throat> it's funny, in Rune Wars, I never really noticed how well these fit together, because I'm not like... <laughs> <laughs> I know! It's it was... funny how in card games you have time to rearrange all your play space, and in Rune Wars you're just frantically measuring constantly. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Very different game. Oh, Although they make me equally nervous when I play them. So, <laughs> um, let's do this in the right order. That would probably be good. Click one I'm going to draw. Click two, I will install. Click three, I will install. Okay. Go ahead. You've got six credits. All right. Well, um, I find myself what's down here. Cool. All right, click one, I will draw a card. Click two, I'll take another credit. So normally this is where I'd say, here comes Magnum Opus, but I've been told it's not in this deck. Yeah, it probably should be, but here we are. Um, <laughs> so click three, I'm going to install Ubax, which is BIOS's console. Uh, that's gonna give me an extra memory, and when my turn begins, I draw a card. Oh, nice. Yep, that's, that's all that's going on yeah, there. That's Fantastic. And then click four. You should actually pay for that, though. Oh, sure. I mean, just for fun. Uh, click four. I'm running out the investigator. <clears throat> right, and so. re remind us what she does. Okay. So, basically... Basically, if I... Uh, um, when you score an agenda, you put her in your score area. Yes. And then, at the end of the game, she gets you set two if you win. Yes. Okay, great. Yep, yep. All right. So... Uh, for my turn, I'll res Pat campaign. That seems good. I mean, I'm going completely off of memory here, but it seems like the thing I'm supposed to do. Yeah. Mandatory draw. <laughs> Your icon's looking a lot better than mine is. <laughs> it's all relative. <clears throat> um... Right. To do what to do.
Did you take your draw already? I did. Great. Did I? Now you've got me wondering. <laughs> oh boy. I think I messed up. All right. If we were serious about this, we would rewind. But let's not be ridiculous. No. All right. I'm going to install and install and take a credit. Cool. Especially I'm going to need to make some runs, but, you know. But you're busy, busy building your empire. Yeah, very slowly with no money. Um, all right, so. It sounds like running a game store. Start of the turn. <laughs> Umax is going to give me a card. Uh, and then I'm going to take four credits. Because <laughs> that's how my game is going. Working that day job. Yep. Mandatory draw. No, day job get this better econ than this. <laughs> <laughs> Minor league. All right. Um, we're just going to advance, advance, advance and score out Vitruvius. Okay. Which doesn't do anything because I didn't over advance it. Because oh, who's. Yep. What am I, Mr. Rich? Who's got that kind of money? Yeah, no. Okay. That's just a blank three for two. Yeah, for Everybody sure. Everybody knows that. I'm going to play that all day. Your go. <laughs> if you advanced oh, it, I got a, I got a credit from him. If you advanced it three times, I probably wouldn't have run it. Let's be clear. No, it definitely would have been an aggressive secretary then. Uh huh. <laughs> All right. Um, no, I just mean I don't think I can break any of <laughs> So like. You're right. I could have got greedy if I wanted to. I mean, you you probably run some biorite ice. So I should probably be running and just like clicking through it. But here we are. That's fair. Uh, all right. Um, so I get a draw from Ubax. Then I'm going to click once for a credit. Click one. Click two. I got that sure gamble. Oh, there it is. Yep. Oh no, now I got a rich runner. This is terrible. I mean, for a minute. Um, click three. We're going to go into my NV RAM for a card. Um, yep, that one. Uh, and click four. Hmm. Yep. Click four. We're gonna play Adept onto my uh, so what is thing here. what does Adept here do? All right. Oh, it's a Fractor. Uh, it's a Fractor and a Killer. What? Uh, it has plus one strength for each unused MU which right now is five, since it's not taking up any itself, wow. and this is giving me an extra. And it can spend two credits to break a sentry or a barrier. Um, oh, also I lowered the install cost by one with this guy, so bonus. So it's currently strength seven? No, five. Oh, Because okay. you start with four, I've got one more from Ubax. Okay, got it. And I'm not taking up any. Yeah, when you said five, I thought you meant your unused MU was five, not your strength was five. Okay, cool, that's still badass. Yes. But it can't increase its strength? It cannot increase strength. Interesting. Okay. Yep. Um, right. That's my turn. Okay. <clears throat> Mandatory draw and pad campaign. Hmm. I will get through most things, though. <laughs> I hope. Blah. I don't remember if, like, uh... Wotan is in this card pool. <laughs> I need you to start running so that I can start putting my hedge funds back on top of my R&D. Mm -hmm. So can you please get with it? Oh, I'll, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> I'm hoping not to use or spend clicks during a run, but we'll see where it goes. We shall see. I'm gonna click one, draw. Uh, to install. You know what, that's dumb. Click two, draw. Click three, install. Alright. Go ahead. Um. So, Ubax gets me a card. Alright, it's time to 
start running. Um, yeah, let's find out what's there. Click one, running into that new that server that you just installed into. Okay, this is probably the worst move of the game. Just a heads up. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, I'll get rid of Vitruvius. <laughs> Neat. Uh, so I can break two of those subroutines. No, I can't. I don't have enough strength. All right. So I'm gonna obviously trash everything. 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 Yeah. So I don't know if you guys can see that. I rezzed Archer. <laughs> it's going, it's subroutines, it's strength six sentry, and its subroutines are the corp gains two credits, trash one program, trash one program, and end the run. Yep. Uh, that, that... I'm assuming those are going off. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really seem to have a way to prevent that, so that happens. I should have done that a little differently, but that's okay. Um... Cool. Um... And as a cost to res it, I had to forfeit an agenda, which is why I no longer have my Vitruvius and why it was probably a bad deal overall, but we'll see. Well, <clears throat> click two. Let's see if we can res that for three credits. Oh, very nice. Clever. Let's see if I can, because I don't remember what's there. <laughs> I can! Oh. Hey, look, I lost the click. <laughs> that triggers your ability, so right? So what do I do you have to do now? The first time the runner... Nope, that's... That's, a, that's on your... Oh, it's on my thingy. RD. The first time each turn the runner loses or spends a click during the run, you may add a card from Archives to the top of R&D. Well, let's just stick my hedge fund right on there. All right. And then the run ends. Um... I guess I'll run HQ. Sure. <laughs> I'll click four. All right. What could go wrong? Nothing. I, I mean, unless I'm holding a snare. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, first access uh, is an ice wall. Second access is another enigma. Oh, God. <laughs> Whatever, I know you got Gordian knots in that deck somewhere. Gordian blade. And that's the one. Yes. Yeah. All right, <clears throat> uh, that's the end of the turn. And I just realized I have to discard a card. Probably should have done all that differently. I don't want to get rid of any of these cards. Well, I'm going to discard Data Sucker, which I wish I had put out and charged up. Yeah. That would have been a great combo for that archer situation. That would have been good. Just one one, one counter on that would have yeah, helped me out there. Definitely. But... Game changer. All uh, right. You know, I did mention that we haven't played, uh, played Netrunner in a year. Yeah, so. yeah. We'll Maybe get there. It really seriously might have been two years. It's possible. <laughs> We're going to learn as we go. How long has this game been out? <laughs> we played definitely for the first year. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, that's the top of my turn. I'm going to get one from a pad campaign. And a mandatory draw. <laughs> this is going to be a dumb question. What's my max hand size? Five. Really? Yep. Wow, that is some BS. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to... You're gonna love this. I have to do this just because I haven't played in the Land Mining Corp. Oh my god. In maybe since the first couple of months that the game was out. So I'm gonna gain seven credits. Oh my god. Um, well, there goes that whole red gonna, starcher, so I get to run around for a bit. Right. Uh, gonna trash aggressive secretary there, because I'm out of cards. Over. Alright. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Things are going well. Uh, so I draw a card from Ubax. Uh, that's helpful. This is, by the way, the best protected Melange Mining Corp that there has ever been. It's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Nobody's one... coming after my Mining Corp. It seems that way. Um, <laughs> I managed to get another process automation, which gets mm. me two credits and a card. It seems like a, a solidly good card. I like it. Um, next, I'm going to play Rabbit Hole. Which is going to allow me Does to that fetch more rabbit holes. Is that search how that works? my deck for another copy of Rabbit Hole and install it by paying its install See, cost. See, I figured you'd have a tunnel link. And I 
think that's all of them. Yes, because there's only two in the corset, so... Oh, right. <laughs> wow, that's uh, a little bit nerfed. A little bit, but... I mean, it's not terrible, so... It's, it does what it needs to, yeah. as we'll see here in a moment. Oh. Um, Are you going to break out an Underworld contact? I might... Are you, you should really be, be impressed. Three. You need to be impressed that I dredged that guy's name up. I, I am. All right. So, sure enough, click three is going to be... Underworld Contact. Holy cow. For two <clears throat> credits. Um, and for click four, I'm going to take a credit. Because that's never bad. Just having money is Or bad. always bad, depending on how you look at it. Right. It's certainly not efficient. <laughs> okay. I get one from Pat Campaign. And a mandatory draw here. I'm going to start with an ice, spending one, and then this has been fun with the melange, but... <laughs> Used it once. <laughs> yep. Sure did make you run. Uh, good enough. Um, installing there, and then a hedge fund on click three. Will that me four? Your go. Okay. So start of the turn, I'm getting a card from Hubax and a credit from Underworld Contact. Um, hmm. That's interesting. go three yeah three clicks for credits and then the fourth click will be to play Maman um, this is a new one on me he's a new AI icebreaker um, he can use a hosted power counter to break an ice subroutine two wow. credits to gain two strength when your turn begins, you may pay X credits to place X power counters on him. When your turn ends, remove all power counters. All right. After a brief interlude for event organizing, <laughs> we're back. Shane has installed... Mamon. Mamon, who is an AI breaker that I've never seen before. And I guess it's my turn because that was fourth click. Yes. All right. Uh, this, these cards must be my hand over here. Great. <laughs> mandatory draw. Credit from Pad Campaign. That Pad Campaign man is boss. Yeah. <laughs> right. I could use one of those. <laughs> well, I guess I have Underworld Contact now. That does help, yeah. All right. Um, I don't see any reason to get fancy. So I'm going to spend three clicks scoring out Brain Rewiring. That seems good. And this is, let's see, this card does a thing. When you score Brain Rewiring, you may pay X credits to force the runner to add X cards from his or her grip to the bottom of his or her stack at random and then draw one card. Oh how, many, how many cards are in your Four. grip? Four. Um, yeah, we're going to just put those on the bottom of uh, your stack. And then uh, you draw random. one. All right. That's terrifying. Well, that's all of them. Yeah, I know. Okay. But I have to write Oh, but you have to shuffle them. Yep. Yes, you're yep. right. Technically, you know, because right. I'm definitely going to draw all the way down oh, there. Oh, wait. Oh, my gosh. I will have done something horribly wrong if we get that far. <laughs> and then I get to draw a card? Yes. Okay. Cute. Well, I don't have to worry about that max hand size I kept bumping up against for a little while. That's true. You won't be discarding. No. No, I'll be fine. Pass turn. Okay. Me. My brain has been rewired. Uh, so, <laughs> start of the turn, I get the one credit, the one card. Um, neat. Not really what I'm looking for right now, but that's fine. Uh, and then I can pay Maman if I choose to. 
Um, I think I'm gonna give him one credit, one power counter. So I pay one, he gets a power counter. Um, and then I've got four clicks. Wow, that really changes my whole turn, doesn't it? <laughs> that's good. I'm glad my four credits weren't worthless. Yeah, no, that 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 was rather good. Um, okay, and you still have five. Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess I will click for three credits. And then run HQ. Uh, I'm going to spend two credits to get up to strength. Okay, I think you mean R&D. That's the one. That's the one. Okay, cool. Yes. Just check it. No, yeah. Yep. Server names, whatever. Yeah. So two credits. Um, I will use this power counter to break the end the run. I don't need mm to break the click because I'm on the last click. Right. And access one card. Okay. Any good? Yeah. Awesome. I got that evidence collection. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't score it twice, which <laughs> would definitely do you some good. Completely. Super important. Let's put this over here. All right. Thanks, dears. So they can see that you're winning. And that's the end of my turn. Link is on camera here. There we go. Okay. Well, suffice oh. to say, I've got three points and you've got two. Yes. I'm barely ahead. Okay. All right. Get a credit from Pad Campaign and, oops, uh, and a draw. You have four credits. Yep. It's gonna be five. Yep. Okay. going to install a card. Yeah, I'm going to install a card. Um, I'm going to advance it once, and I'm going to... Click for... Uh, you know what? Nope. Gonna draw. Sorry, okay. okay. All yours. All right. So that looks like probably a two-point agenda for four. I don't know what would make you think that. <laughs> I get a card. That's just because you credit. don't know that I sprung for Project Junebug. Yeah. Well, <laughs> in that case, I definitely don't want to run it. But either way, I'm probably not breaking Archer with Maman at the moment. Uh, because that would, that would be me to... fairly expensive, yeah. Yeah, and I don't have that kind of money. Um, so I'm going to spend one on Maman this turn. See, I figured this is where you crack out a sure gamble for a femme fatale and just... That would be nice. I would like that. Steamroll But me. that's not how that's happening right now. Um, instead, I'm going to do the same thing I did last turn <laughs> and get three credits and a single run on um, the right. deck right. server. Okay. <laughs> yes, that deck server. Great. These and this, and I get a card, and looks trashable. Yeah, you can keep that. <laughs> it's all yours. <laughs> uh, Past turn. All right. Bad campaign that draw. <laughs> Didn't even bother to spend the credit. How insulting. I know. Oh, all right. I just feel like after the last one that you used once and then got impatient, like, maybe this is going to be okay. Impatient? Like there was anything better to do with an archer. All right. I mean, um, you could click it like three more ta three more turns and I still wasn't going to do anything. That's true. If you could have just had money forever. I just had other stuff I needed to do. All yeah, right. That's um, what I mean. Impatient. <laughs> okay. So I clicked this guy three times. Yeah. Um, which is a successful field test. When you score successful field test, install any number of cards from HQ, ignoring all costs. Neat. Um, that's pretty tough, actually. <laughs> um, so you're at five now. A 
that's that will end, isn't it? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? I would like to know. I mean, this is just hilarious at this point, so I don't know why not. Like, these are free. Yeah, they yeah, sure are. This is super free. Why not? Right? Well, that seems good. Uh, oh, an upgrade, too. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Cool. You're good. Neat. A successful field test is actually really good. Uh, yeah. It's um, maybe better than priority requisition, I which agree. I tried so hard to score on Janus over and over and over and mostly failed. Yeah. Um, well, shoot. I don't know how I don't lose this game. <laughs> because you know with three credits I can res pretty much everything in there. I mean obviously, yeah. but still I'm like, super rich. I don't have any icebreakers. Well let's let's do my start of turn things. Um Oh, when I scored that, did she happen? Oh yeah, well yeah. you should go back and do that. Yeah. Because like you obviously would have. Obviously. Um, it would have exposed all cards in a remote server, so probably I would have picked that one. Because <laughs> I don't think I had a lot of ice there. Yeah, I, I don't it. think. Yeah, so, it's a wall of static. Okay, good. I know there's a wall of static yeah. protecting that. Because I'm definitely going to run through that. Definitely. My pet campaign seems like your top priority. At this point. Okay, the real question is do I feed Maman this turn? I think the answer is no. Um. So, instead, I'm going to click for a card from my RAM. I'm going to click for a card from my deck. I'm gonna click to install Data Sucker, and then I'm gonna run archives and get a Data Sucker counter. Nice. Done like a true noise deck. Yep. Pass turn. <clears throat> All right, mandatory draw. Bad campaign. I forget what I put in the server. My only solace is that the people watching can't see my hand or my VRAM, so they don't know like all the terrible mistakes I've made. Right, no, like, yeah, they have to assume you had <laughs> nothing better going on. Yeah, no, my, my, uh, my hand has just been terrible this whole the time. The good news is I'm going to put you out of your misery. Oh, that's good. Yeah, the truth is. Yeah, sorry, this game was, was punishing for you. Um, it sure was. I think that uh, Archer, like, I really hesitated to put Archer in this deck um, because I didn't have a lot of one-point agendas I wanted to sack to him. But it turns out that sacking a two-point agenda to Archer is still a completely legitimate move. It super is. Um, and then uh, this card was better than I ever assumed it would be. The successful field test, which yeah, that's, let that's, me install stuff. That's rather good. Even though none of it actually got resed, I think it was still pretty intimidating. Yeah. No, I was looking at that server like, I don't know how much of that I have no idea what's in there. And even the stuff that already is resed is going to cost me like 10 to get through. And I guess 8 if I let the first subroutine fire. Yeah. Or 9. Without nine. Femme Fatale, Archer is pretty much a jerk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, and getting to play a Melange Mining Corp for the first time in two years was just <laughs> so nostalgic. I think I think my big thing is I remember when I was first teaching Netrunner, <laughs> and uh, getting your Wayback Machine. I would tell people uh, that new players are always a little bit hesitant to make early runs, and that's a mistake. Mm -hmm. It turns out I'm a new Netrunner player again because. Like, I should have been face-checking all those servers right from the beginning, make you pay for that ice, because otherwise you've just got the money to work with and mm -hmm. do your hedge fund stuff with, and I never did any of that. It's true. If you don't force the corp to res ice, you give them power. Yeah, yeah. And, and the early ice is unlikely to completely wreck you, especially since you don't have anything installed yet, so what are they going to do to you? Like, maybe you get hit with some brain damage, but it's unlikely. Right. Um, so yeah, I think I think next game I need to be more aggressive. I would agree. I think you could have there. You would have at least made me make interesting decisions about whether 
I wanted to risk you looking at my hand because I always had an agenda in hand. Yeah. Um, and especially with HQ interface out there, I had to ask myself all the time, like, wow, 40% chance of seeing my uh, agenda is kind of bad for me. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, I think grabbing, because of course I put the, the HQ interface in my RAM, and when mm -hmm. I saw you did an ICE HQ, uh, I was holding, um, these cards that were in my hand, I was holding some great, uh, like, maker's eye type stuff, and so uh, I was yeah. like, if she only has one piece of ice, then I can run, like, whichever server is best for me, just, you know, whatever. Uh, so early on, like, the whole ice avoidance stuff, I was in good shape, mm -hmm. but um, I really should have just been making you res ice, making you pay for it, and finding out what you had. Especially that turn one advantage where I didn't, I only drew the one ice. Yeah. Uh, my second ice in the opening hand was Archer, which obviously I couldn't res. Right. And so I had I mean, to decide whether I was going to play it anyway, just to make sure. Them play, I mean, it's a good but, bluff. Yeah. But I know that the way you play, you're generally willing to face check a couple pieces of ice on the first turn. No problem. <laughs> I used to be. <laughs> I will it's be. It's funny next how game. you lose your your yeah. sense of rhythm. Yep. yep. Um, totally lost that. But also, I mean, I wouldn't bring it up, but I think the brain rewiring is also yes uh, a really good. No, part. and um, if you could have seen my hands, plans. it was real good. It was, that that was well played. Uh, there was the another data sucker is, already in my hand. Oh wow. Uh, of course, I was still holding that maker's eye because I was like, that's going to happen. Um, and I waited way too long to use this other maker's eye-like card that's new. Oh. Um, Make a run on R&D. If successful, access one additional card for each unused MU up to four. Holy yeah. cow. So I could have gotten five cards off of that. Yeah, you definitely would have scored on that. A lot yeah. of the game. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, so it yeah. turns out that the, the brain rewiring was great. It's especially great because you don't have to over advance the card to use it. You can just have, yeah. you know. Yeah, you just you just spend the money after you right. store it, you which can do that is on unusual. A, you can do that on a biotic labor if you want, and then just spend all your money on it, which is great. Yep, yep. Yeah, well, that's that's fantastic. This deck definitely played better than I gave it credit for. <laughs> I played worse than I gave my me credit for, yes. but I can't blame the deck yet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, there's definitely some some key runner cards that are missing from the second base set. Yes. But, um, yeah, also some court cards. So, hard to say. I think round two will be very interesting. Yep. Uh, so, you get to uh, reveal set two. Ooh. Uh, which I guess maybe we do next video? I, you know, I may as well take care of it. Sure, do it. Um, oops. Because, yeah, you won a game with that evidence gathering. Oh, yeah, I sure did. Okay. So, all right. Wow, there's a lot of set two stuff here for stickers. Holy cow. And then, um, <laughs> this is our epilogue. <laughs> yep. That's some cards. It looks like I get maybe something like assets or something. Oh, yeah, I get some character assets. All right, let's read about it. Uh, yeah, you know what? We probably... Yeah, I guess we should read it when we unlock it. So, <laughs> the story continues. We had no idea. Your footsteps ricochet through the parking level. I assume because I'm wearing super high heels. <laughs> this character is definitely all the way still at her heels. Each step a too loud announcement of your presence. You know it's perfectly safe, yet your heart pounds in your chest. You can't decide if it's excitement or terror. Over here, says Sloane, and you walk to meet him. He's not wearing his black suit and tie for a change, but a navy blue athletic shirt under a tactical vest and harness. You've never seen Sloane kitted up for field work like this. Somehow it makes him look even more professional. Is this a romance? <laughs> I hope so. Are we about to see the other side of Sloane? I, I should have. <laughs> <laughs> your, your faceless character and Sloane. Yes. <laughs> the body is a woman, either young or rich enough to look it. Her clothes are fashionable and high-end, and tasteful dead metal jewelry hangs from her wrists. You assume she was wearing earrings, too, but there's not enough left of her head to tell. Behind you, you hear Zhang gasp. I thought the bioroid was destroyed by the NAPD. It was, says Sloan. He nods at the corpse. It's like we thought. This isn't an isolated situation. Sloan gestures at the hard, clad, hard suit clad sec team surrounding you. Aside from these guys here, we three are the only people who know she's dead. What do we do now, boss? I feel like we're missing a piece of that story because I don't know who she is. And, and I don't remember NAPD catching the guy. <laughs> Maybe that's in your cards somewhere. Or, I mean, yeah, I think maybe it expects us to sort of fill in some of the story, because this clearly happened after you gathered enough evidence, so... Right, yeah, yeah it could be. 
yeah, something about my partnership with the NAPD. Okay, so then I get it to make one of these choices between protective and aggressive, uh, or predator, or whatever. Um, <laughs> so I, I chose protective again, because I'm a conservative player. Get everything you can here, then notify NAPD. We may still benefit from cooperation. I assume even though it's looking more and more like we made rogue robots <laughs> that are terrorizing the city. Uh, read preemptive counterstrike. There we go. Sounds protective to me. She introduces herself as Investigator Inez Delgado, and it soon becomes clear that she knows far more about the investigation than the lead detective, Jimenez. All right, she admits when you confront her, I've been pursuing this case as a, let's call it an extracurricular. I'm not trying to claim jump you. I just want this thing locked down so no one else dies. She grins, looks away, and laughs. Okay, bust it again. I mean, I don't want anyone to die, but mostly it's like six times more interesting than my day job. And that crime <laughs> gets dull for a jock like me. When you bring up the unknown runner, she throws up her hands. That wasn't me. You're on your own with this particular fly in your ointment. That's fine. You already had a plan in place for that fly. So, uh, slot B. Progress, trash one runner card. When complete, reveal set six. Oh, yeah. We uh, also totally forgot our... Yeah, we were real bad at this In-game already. slots. Yeah. Uh, whenever you scored an agenda, I was supposed to get two credits, which would have helped at least a little... And there were some unsuccessful runs where you would have gained two credits. Right. We basically both forgot to gain credits. I think it would have helped you more than me, and I apologize for that. Whatever. Um, okay, so then, uh, let's see. So I can uh, add any number of Investigator Inez Delgados to my deck, and she's really cool. Um, not only is she a tough cop, but uh, she says, whenever you score an agenda, you may swap it with an agenda in the runner's score area worth at least one point, then resolve the when scored ability on that agenda. So it's like, oh, the runner got one of your agendas? Well, you get to still execute the win text. Yeah. Um, seems awesome. Okay, so then we've got stay the course. Yeah, you can also swap out like a one pointer for a three pointer that I managed to nab True. or whatever. Yes. But more likely, I'm going to give you a two-pointer so I can get the one-pointer back that lets me trash your hand. <laughs> Let's be honest, that's how this is going to go. You now understand that you are not choosing, chasing a single bioroid, but something else. Is it a new bioroid model or a common defect in bioroid programming? With the original case closed, your investigation must move underground. You authorize, verbally of course, with no paperwork to be traced back to you. What are you, an idiot? Expanded investigatory powers for Sloan staff. Sloan quietly brings a pair of mercenary runners on team, setting them up with a luxury suite at a discreet hotel. It is widely known that runners will do anything for a luxury suite. You bet. Have you ever seen con-goers at a hospitality room? <laughs> you begin to put together a profile of offending bioroids. You'll find what you're after. You're sure of it. So far, your profile of offending bioroids includes sledgehammers. That's all you really know. Okay. And, and, and also murder. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, once you get the sledgehammers, the murder follows. Obviously. Okay, so uh, I've got a new objective. Progress is win one game. I need three wins to reveal set five. Um, but I'm also going to update my evidence collection cards to say that if I win with them in my scoring area, I reveal set five. So wow. set five is my next set for winning. So that gets you, like, way ahead this time, because you need three wins without it or just one win with it. Right, yeah. Uh, scoring evidence collection becomes more and more important. Um, okay, so then we get our first caution. Anticipated action. This is Ducks, says Sloan, indicating a young woman in your employ. I'm Terry, she says, rolling her golden eyes. Ducks is the other guy. Uh, Terry is worth noting is spelled with a T in front, like pterodactyl, which I'm assuming is her full name. <laughs> Ducks and Terry like to swap names on me and pretend I can't tell them apart, says Sloan. Tell the boss what you told me. Sure, says Ducks and or Terry. I sniffed your backside and found it dusty, but there's some serious spice in that last 96. A regular party in the tubes. What Dux is saying, sighs Sloan, is that we are now under constant cyber attack. If we don't devote enough resources to our defense, we are in danger of... Like being owned like a clone in Rome, chirps Dux. <laughs> she was definitely at the top of her class in hacker school. <laughs> the second time you spend a click to draw, not including through card abilities, in a single turn, reveal set three. 
Oh boy. But it's a caution, so I have to assume that's terrible. Yeah. Like, don't yeah. do that. So set three is bad. Right. Set, I, don't, I don't think we want set three. Set five is good, but set three is bad. Right. So this goes in slot E. Okay. Because the game's like, whoa, slow down there, winner. I guess. Yeah, it's quit drawing or something. Um, all right, so that's that. Is that everything? I thought you got another caution? The security? Um, oh, yeah, yep, and security shortcut. All right. <laughs> Speaking of the board, says Zhang, pushing the remains of her caliente spice dumpling at aside, <laughs> you had not, in fact, been speaking of the board or anything related to them. I assume you'd been on a date. I don't know. <laughs> you need to maintain business as usual during this thing. That means reinvesting capital. She holds her hands up, forestalling your next comment. I know, I know, I'm supposed to work for the board, not you, but I feel invested in this now. I want to see how it ends, and I don't want the board to come in and destroy you. She takes a sip of her Sidron Cola, then shrugs and grins. I mean, if they tell me to, I will, but I'll feel bad about it. <laughs> uh, so this is a caution. When your turn ends, reveal set four if there are at least 20 credits in your credit pool. Well, that seems unlikely. <laughs> Don't get too greedy. I guess not. Maybe take Melange out of your deck for next time, Jang but it's your call. Reinvest the capital. I don't know, using it once and then trashing it's super efficient. Yeah. Okay. That was definitely um, worth the, the click to install. And <laughs> it, it was because it made you run an archer. It did yeah. make me okay. run an archer. So, you know, judge at your own risk. All yeah. right. Um, so that's all of these crazy stickers I got to put on, except I have to update my evidence collection. And uh, that'll make us ready for round two, except for some deck adjustments that I'm sure we both want to do. Yeah. So thanks for tuning in. Whatever. And, Mine's perf. Uh, it's obviously perfect. <laughs> uh, thanks for tuning in, and our next video will be round two of this mess. Yeah.